Nearly 18 months ago, a police marksman was arrested after fatally shooting 28-year-old Jermaine Baker. It prompted the then Prime Minister David Cameron to order a review into legal protections for firearms officers. Not only has that review yet to be published, but grave concerns remain over the way armed officers continue to be treated as suspects each time they discharge their weapons. Critics say the government's firearms uplift programme, aimed at protecting the public from terrorist attacks, continues to be undermined by proposed changes to procedures adopted in the aftermath of shooting incidents. Here we examine the dilemmas facing armed officers having to make split-second decisions against the backdrop of a severe terror threat. Police training to become firearms officers take down an armed suspect as part of an exercise. It all happens in the blink of an eye. But officers who have experienced the real thing say time slows down. And perceptions become surreal in that life-changing moment. Just imagine having to make that split-second decision on whether or not to pull the trigger. I don't think we should underestimate the impact that these things have on officers. They are traumatised by this. They've just potentially taken somebody's life. Um, and clearly, you know, in their minds they will have that. They will have the bereaved relatives. They will have, what effect is this going to have on my own family? Um, is this going to, am I going to lose my job? Am I going to go to prison? You know, are people going to believe me? Have I made a mistake? You know, all these things will be racing through their minds straight after the incident. When an officer discharges their firearm, an investigation starts immediately. After giving life-saving first aid, they head straight to a post-incident suite, where the Independent Complaints Commission's draft guidelines propose they should be separated to avoid collusion. The Police Federation want the clause removed, saying that it's unfair and unnecessary. If I were involved in a shooting or, or, or a similar incident and somebody had then separated me, I would immediately be thinking that I was being treated as a suspect. That's the wrong side for any policeman to be on. We train to do the job we do. Um, we are there to protect the public. Um, I know of no officers ever that have thought anything different. I think that would change the mindset of a lot of officers. I think that would change the way they, they perceive each incident. I think there'll be a reluctance to shoot. Uh, and I think that's a very dangerous place to be in particularly when the government's uplift programme wants 1,500 more armed officers to protect the public against terrorism. The demands on armed units are already tough, and the police firearms organisations are warning that increasing the pressure on officers could make training new ones a harder sell. Behind every police officer under investigation is a family, and they too suffer. We've seen situations where partners have had nervous breakdowns, they have to go to counselling, We've had children bullied at school. Uh, we've had abduction attempts on children in the past, many years ago, uh, after a firearms incident. Uh, we've had death threats against uh, police firearms officers as well. So obviously that has an effect on their families and uh, children in particular. After the Westminster terror attack, the Police Firearms Officers Association received an influx of calls to the welfare support helpline from officers who were distressed by what they'd experienced. Following the Westminster incident, uh, we found that a number of officers rang the 24-7 welfare support line that we, we run with the Police Federation of England and Wales. And we were extremely humbled by that, uh, uh, and our staff took quite distressing calls from officers that had witnessed horrific events, obviously. It certainly takes a special kind of person to sign up for firearms training. Complex and high risk, the job is also hugely rewarding. Anyone who trains to carry firearms does so voluntarily. There is no extra pay. And some of these officers say it's almost a calling. That doesn't, however, make them impenetrable. We've got to remember that these are family men and women. And they're out there protecting us, keeping everyone safe. And at the end of the day, they go back to being family people, back to husbands, back to wives, back to being mums and dads. And we sometimes forget that and it gets lost in the portrayal of these macho people that carry guns. Well, that's not the case. It's the training that allows them to um, go out on the streets, put themselves in harm's way, standing in front of you, prepared to take a bullet for you. 
and yet um, at the end of the day it's just normal human beings not super humans not super men just members of the public who have come forward and decided to become police officers and specialize in this field Right now, officers wanting to train in firearms are watching and waiting to see what the Home Office decides on the IPCC guidance. Where is the care and support there for these people that volunteer to do this role to protect us all by separating them and treating them like criminals? If they're going to take the plunge, they need to know the protections are there to support them if they ever need to pull the trigger.